A wonderful evening to you, Lagos. My name is Ola Tunji, Ola Jidun as Triple O, and this is Sport Cruise live on Milan 98.3 FM. Yes, this is Sport Cruise, the show where we give you premium information, sporting content, and exclusives. Yes, as it unfolds in the ever exciting, sometimes controversial world of sport and of course i'm not going to be doing this alone i've got uh okwe yemi aki yode the controversial okwe and i've got another man all this why we didn't we couldn't find him a nickname but eventually today this evening while we were in the office uh his nickname just dropped like mana from heaven by himself, by himself. so uh i know okwe yemi knows what this nickname means but uh, we just put it. Uh, I will be civil as possible. They've, 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 uh, they've tagged me as as a bad guy, and I'm not a bad guy. I'm just uh, a, a, a realistic individual. But uh, let me, let me. Okay, before I come to you, let me let's welcome the man we just renamed. Uh, Ola the pundit, eh? <laughs> Ola the pundit, eh? Ah, Ibu. <laughs> so you've had this, you've had this issues this year. No, Ola, I mean, you are the pundit. <laughs> you are into well, punditry. Well, I don't know. I don't, I know what pundit is. I know Tiki Taka. I don't know what Tiki Taka, wherever he is, he's shaking his head. Because but I don't know. He's I don't also know. involved in that same act of punditry. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by pundit, but I, I, I know, I know a guy named is a pundit. He's a pundit, yes. That isn't pundit. that what you're doing? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that what you're doing? I'm going to be Lagos. Good evening, guys. It's to you. Uh, so glad to be here today. Ah, uh, what a great, what, 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 what a great uh, agreement uh, for Casemiro. Oh, we'll get there. Don't uh, let the cat out of the bag yet. That is why I call you pundit. Eh? You would like to see. <laughs> uh, just don't let the cat out of the bag. They yet. Don't touch yes, the yes. Okay, we'll Casemiro is on his way to Manchester United. We we'll, we we'll talk about that. We we'll talk. In fact, tomorrow on Sports Spectacular, we we'll talk about it at length. But I, th- I think that fee is outrageous. The fee is outrageous. Yeah. The player is quality. Yes, sometimes you pay outrageous fee to to get quality. Sometimes for an exotic, uh, you know, for an exotic product, you have to pay hey, beyond <laughs> beyond. <laughs> Exotic product. The, yes, <coughs> exotic product. If, if, I'd, <laughs> if I'd met Triple outside of Mainland FM studio, I would have suggested a job for you to be doing. <laughs> no, <laughs> so let me just let me, let's just stay no, back. Let's okay, just okay, agree okay. that export. If, if, if you want something, mm. and what you want is that good, and the owner doesn't want to sell, or maybe the owner would sell but at an exotic price, inflated price, and you know that thing you want. Is very valuable, and you really need it. Won't you pay exotic price? Uh, for it? Yeah, I, I don't understand what Ola means by that. That price is exotic. Just I don't understand years. what you mean by his outrageous. Yeah, how how old is Ali the Kolibali? Yeah. Answer me now. Just what, just can, can, for can, the remove your hand. What 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 what? Remove your hand. You, 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 you can't come. What do you mean by it's too outrageous? It's the thing. But United needs a deep line playmaker and Casemiro. See. I'm, I'm, I've not been excited about is there, Manchester. Is there, is there any deep line playmaker that is better than Casemiro right now in, in the, the world? world? No, no. no. He's, <laughs> so, he's certainly top. I mean, was it not a few days ago that we were talking about the best? I mean, Maguire three? will get to play with Casemiro. Do you know the funny? <laughs> do, no, 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 let me, let me, let me tell you the biggest. What me, happened? Hold on, let me tell you the funny thing about life. Ronaldo, Varane, Casemiro, the former Real Madrid Champions League winners. We'll be playing in the Europa League this and Harry Maguire will be their captain. Hey. You see this life? Eh? <laughs> you see this life? When the Bible says yeah, the head like. shall be the tail and the tail, you see this life? Mm. Now, <laughs> I, I, it is Harry Maguire that be the captain of this three. Now, I think it was a couple of days back. We were talking about which of the three is the best. We talked about uh, Xavi, Iniesta and um, Sergio Busquets. We talked about Modric Andre Cruz, Pilo, uh, um, uh, Gattuso Cidoff. and Clarence Sidov. Then we talked about Luka Modric, Tony Cruz and Casemiro. Casemiro has a World Cup on his neck, if I'm not mistaken. How many Champions League does he have? Five. Five. Five Champions League. Four. Four. Was he it four? four? Yeah, he has four. Does I think Casemiro doesn't have it was, World Cup? It was not. It was not. He's Brazilian. Brazilian. He's Brazilian. He's not French. He's not so French. He's Brazilian. He's not French. He's Brazilian. 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 He's Brazil
how many trophies they've won the world club competition three times they he has won three uh, la liga title i mean this guy is absolutely one gone, of the most man. decorated brazilian players that we have now that is still playing no yeah. disrespect to daniel Alves and all of that so I, I don't understand what you mean by the fees are true you see football is gone crazy right now i remember yeah, we we're saying it day for us today that as it is now right? i'm sure some countries they, some they were offering people country to play where i come and play for chelsea <laughs> we'll give you ghana and togo as it is now the way money is going if you, if you say that is uh, that amount is outrageous for casemiro don't forget that barcelona bought a certain name for 222 million euros i yeah, mean that's are. a lot of money no, how much is but even I, too I, much I for guess, casemiro how, how much, much are you talking about I'm, I'm, I'm not saying casemiro is 30 but, but looking at 50.7 50 50 million, million pounds no, I'm, I'm I'm 10 million 10 million euros add-ons yes so, so his money could eventually go to 69 70 million pounds how much did you call it what i see on bbc what I see on the BBC right now on my screen is 50 pl- uh, 50.7 million pounds plus, plus 10 add-ons. million add ons. Yes, that's, that, that's 60.7. Is, 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 is even 10 million in euros, so it is 8.5 million pounds. Pounds. So the old deal is not even up to so 60 I, million. I, I, the, no, so I, I, you know, the old deal is up to 60 million, but pounds. not up to 70 million pounds. So it's not too much for so you have an, if, you, if you do the math, you have in and around. 67 68 million pounds no i don't, I, 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 don't much. Much. I understand that too much i understand how camel uh, casemiro can be a very good player he's, he he's not won, like how he can he be won, he's been he a very good he has, player he has won everything he's so so good he's the best dm we have in the world right so now. why would but you it, not want to pay money but, to but, but, but look, looking at how does it solve manchester united problem is he's the missing and it provides manchester cover for the united defense it provides balance for Ericsson. And United it provides could balance have the for the defense. Best midfield trial. I won't Ericsson, be surprised. Fernandez and Casimiro. Excuse me. Fernandez. Is that not quality? Yes. That's Bruno that, Fernandez. That, 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 no, it's quality. Is that not quality very enough? Very but I, I'm, not, I'm not saying. You have balance, you have fluidity, I'm, you have I'm, a player that can I'm hold up play, you have someone that can break form, up the attack. In the form he has been when the first he, time he got signed. Yeah, when he got, when he got See, signed. Baba, Probably because of. I don't know. The game out when don't you need up. quality around you, I don't think it's about Ronaldo distraction. What you have, what you need quality this, around. These are kind of signings that we want have, Ronaldo to stay. And then you have yeah. quality around you. Now the conversation is going to change. Ronaldo has Varan now. Now he's got to the Casemiro. Now he's himself is going to get into the team. He's got a certain Fernandez into the side. He's got Ericsson in the side. I, th- I don't understand. I see. think the first thing to do is um, first thing to do as a manager of um, Man United. I think the first thing that I got to do. <laughs> he's still the captain of Maguire. I think no, I no, think no, that, that, no. That is who will, one of the who will he give the captain to? We have players that can do it. There. I think Ronaldo should be the captain. I don't, I, know I don't think so. Ronaldo does. Ronaldo has not done enough this season to justify him being given Last the captain. Season? I said this season. This season. Okay. This okay, season. Okay. Okay. Let's We're see. talking about this season. If, if, if Ronaldo he gets the captain shown, man this season, it will be because they want to compensate. They want him to stay. Because they want him to stay, and that's not enough reason to give someone the captain. But that was exactly what we feel was going to happen at the start of last season when he got signed. But he said he doesn't want the captain man. He said he just wants to come play for Manchester United, and he came in and he did the job. Third highest goal scorer in the Premier League last season. Highest goal scorer for Manchester United. I mean, he got into his double figures. I mean, so you expect that other normal circumstances, he's, he's done the best he should do. A striker is judged by his numbers. Yeah. Goals, and Ronaldo gave them in double figure. At that age, he's probably one of the oldest players in, in Manchester, even not the oldest player in Manchester United. He's player. So, and he's still, he's still the best player in the side. So, for me, I think the perfect balance is for Ca- Casemiro comes in into the side with a lot of energy, with a lot of winning mentality. That is very key. Fernandez have not, he has not won so many things in his, in his career. Mm-hmm. Eriksen has not won so many things in his career also. I, but I, then I, you I, have a certain Casemiro that understands what it means to play for the biggest club in the world. The biggest sporting club in human history, which is Real Madrid. No, uh, you must know now. You must know. Oh, 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 likes to. Biggest. Uh, uh, likes to. Biggest. You know, no, slap and you it. must emphasize now. So that's exactly what. it is. above your mic. Stop <laughs> emphasizing. You oh, kilo emphasize. Is it that big? Uh, is it bigger than the head? Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> you just keep emphasizing and emphasizing and emphasizing. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh. We've talked Casimero. We'll still get into that conversation. In fact, tomorrow, uh, we'll look at the situation with more in-depth analysis tomorrow. But uh, for today, we'll be having a special interview, yes, with the former chairman of Gombe State Football Association. I'm talking about Al-Aji Ahmed Shuaibu Gara Gombe. Yes, we'll be having him on the show 
uh, this evening on Sport Cruise. Yes, there's a lot that has been going on around, and we know the NFF elections uh, will happen in November, uh, September 30th. So we'll be having the conversation around the NFF election, the next elections of the NFF. Amaji Pinik has said he's stepping down, he's not going for a third term. So, yes, there's a lot, a lot that we'll be discussing on the show. Stay tuned to Mainland 98.3 FM where we try to connect with Al Aji, Ahmed, Shwaibu, Gara, Gumbe. Stay tuned, it's still Mainland 98.3 FM and this is Sport Cruise with the Spectaculars. FM in the Sport Cruise Live right here on Milan 98.3 FM. My name remains Tripulu. I've got Okpeyemi Akinyo, the controversial Okpe right here, and there's still the Ola the Pondit. Yes, Ola the Pondit is still very much in the studio. Why we keep trying to connect with uh, Al Aji, uh, Sheu Ahmed, Gara Uh, let's still uh, keep tabs on uh, what's happening, the situation at Real Madrid. Why we try, why we continue to try to connect to Al Aji right there. So for the Casimero deal, personal terms have been agreed. Carlo Ancelotti has come out to also confirm that deal. So this is not just a uh, rumor. This is not just it's not even in the, in the news. team list for it's their next game. For their next game, uh, Carlo Ancelotti has come out to confirm that uh, uh, Casimero wants to leave. He wants to join Manchester. He wants a new challenge. Yes, he wants a new challenge. He's seen it all. He wants to join. He wants to leave. He didn't say he wants to join Manchester. He just said he wants to leave. He didn't confirm because, you know, I, I don't want to misquote him. He said he wants to leave. He has I, 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 I expressed the fact in... that he wants to leave. But uh, for Real Madrid, they were supposed to be done with their transfer business. But with Casimero looking to leave, don't forget, they already got in Chouameni and there's Camavinga. And there's but Tony Cruz that can Tony... even play Casimero's role. Yes, that can play Casimero's role. But they are still looking at... A potential move for another Brazilian that's talking about uh Gumeres. Gumeres of Newcastle United. Newcastle United got Gumeres just last season, and Real Madrid are looking at Gumeres as the next replacement for Cassie Mero. But I, I, I want to ask you guys, you know, uh, why did you then sign? Uh, okay, uh, we have Alaji on the line, so we'll continue with that conversation. Hello, Al Aji. Good evening. Sure. Yeah, good evening. How are you? Uh, I'm very fine. My name is Ola Tunji Olaji Olani. I've got uh, Okoyemi Akinyode right here with me and uh, Ola Olua Oni. So, uh, welcome to Mainland 98.3 FM Al Aji. Thank you. It's my pleasure to go and uh, get to many of you. Uh, all, uh, Thank you, Al Aji. So, um, for the records, we got uh, Al Aji Ahmed Shwaibu uh, Gara Gombe right here with us. So, uh, Al Aji, let's start from the state of sports in Nigeria in general. Uh, what's your opinion? What's your take on the current state of sporting development in Nigeria, Al Aji? Well, um, I will rather approach this uh, question with uh, questions. Um, Optimism, mm -hmm. so to say, or rather with caution, because uh, our sports has um, its ups and it has its own down. Mm. However, the ups actually came for me in the last uh, few weeks when uh, Amusan and uh, uh, it's it's a and also some of the um, athletes that participated in the Commonwealth Games put some smiles in our faces. Mm. But uh, outside that, yes, we have some pockets of uh, successes here and there, 
But on a larger assessment, we have a lot of needless crisis mm. all around, occasioned by the elections into sports federations and also some of the uh, uh, prejudices, so to say, if you like, prejudices mm. that have happened uh, in our football, which is uh, our major sport. Mm. But uh, honestly speaking, uh, uh, we have a lot of downs than ups. Mm. But uh, we, we have to hold ourselves responsible for mm. that. Okay. Uh, since you've talked about uh, the organization and also you already mentioned the organization and some of the prejudice uh, in the Nigerian sport and football majorly. Uh, let's talk about that now. Incumbent NFF president uh, Amar Jupini confirmed some days ago that he will not be running for a third term in office, which opens doors uh, to a new leadership. What are your expectations ahead of the September 30th NFF election in Benin City, Alaji? Honestly speaking, if you ask me, uh, Amaji is going about, or some of his foot soldiers are going about uh, hailing him with all sorts of fanfare and euphoria from his decision not to contest. I see he was doing Nigeria a favor, or he doing our football a favor. Mm. Uh, that being the case, I do not think that um, when he even said it, I did not believe him. Because mm. he had been saying it before, and he does not keep to his words until now. And I can tell you, if there is one thing that Amadou would have to keep in his life or in his profile, it's for him to continue to be president of Nigeria Football Association. But I can tell you, the hard writing and the forces that pushed him to take that decision are so strong and overwhelming that he has no choice than to do it. So for me, it's not a favor he has done to us. And I say it to anybody who cares to listen, it is not a favor he did. He has overstayed his welcome. In fact, he is supposed even to be in peace, going by the kind of prejudice, mismanagement, monumental corruption, and non-performance that our football has uh, found itself under his watch. Okay, uh, Al Aji, let me let me ask you. You mentioned that uh, he's been he's been made not to continue, not to run as a third term. What do you mean by, you know, forces, power, beyond? Could you explain that for us, Alaji? Yes, of course. You see, it is it's, it's very clear that uh, he's under investigation. I'm a refugee is under investigation. His courts are cool. And I'm sure if he dare takes any move to say he wants to continue, uh, those who are supposed to really bring him down, bring him to book, are going to activate that process. And I'm sure we have seen that handwriting. That is why he let it go. But I do not think that is the end of it. Uh, so it is very clear there are some powerful forces, stakeholders, even within the Nigerian Congress. Alaji, who are the powerful forces? Powerful forces, powerful, powerful forces are, are everywhere. Even if, even those within the Congress are powerful forces. Hmm. The stakeholders outside the Congress are also powerful forces. Hmm. Powerful forces doesn't have to be from government hmm. or from anywhere. Hmm. Yes, forces are forces, and power is power. In as much as you do something not willingly, there must be, and you are, you are forced to, whether it is tangible or intangible, you are forced to take a decision, which I know it is not his own independent decision to do that. Mm. Uh, it is this forces that force him to do that. Mm. And I mean what I'm saying, and I know what I know. 
Mm. So that is why he's not he wasn't ready to, to, to let it go mm. at all. Okay, uh Al Aji, uh let's get into your expectation for the elections. Now Amaji Pinik is not contesting. So you've talked about Amaji Pinik, but what about the election, the organization of the elections and the paperwork and everything? What do you expect like what are your expectations? Well, I'm not expecting anything from this election. That is still the election can hold. <sighs> I can tell you I have uh, started smelling a crisis. Number one, the issue of uh, amendment of the status, mm -hmm. which is the basis for all the problems we have in our football today. There are so many people within the uh, status quo that don't want to let it go. They don't want anybody outside to come in. And as it is, if you go ahead and have these elections on September 30th as it is, nothing has changed. Nothing is going to change. Because within that status quo, there will be only three people that will qualify to contest or who will have chance to win these elections because it is more or less now like a cabal or a cult like thing. If you don't belong or you are not within the cycle, you can't make any impact. Whether we like it or not, under the status quo, the FA chairman called the shots. They decide who leads the federation. And they are 37 in number out of 44 or 45. So, and that was the basis with which the master plan committee was formed to come up with recommendations and solutions to open up the space for Nigerian football to be all inclusive, allow every stakeholder who is qualified to participate and rest of it. And in as much as the status is not amended, nothing is going to change, it's going to be business as usual, and uh, we cannot continue this way. So I'm afraid if this election really is going to hold. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Al Aji. Since you've already mentioned uh, the composition of the NFF 44 uh, man congress I, I also want to ask you you being a former uh, fa chairman yourself of uh, gombe state football association uh, why can't it be more than 44 because with 44 just like you mentioned the the, the, the idea the idea why we found ourselves with 44 the idea was this mess because it's a mess was created by Sani Lulu when he was uh, chairman of the NFA. He reduced the number so that he would have control mm. and manipulate it. And he succeeded. And that is what is haunting us in today. Before, it was not like that. Before, we had it more than almost 90 or 100. We had all the EFA chairmen. We had the secretaries. We had the clubs. The we have the sports writers. We have the uh, 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 military and paramilitary, and all of that. All stakeholders. It was all inclusive. But as it is now, it more or less reduced like a cabal, <coughs> just a pocket size, so that they can uh, easily manipulate them. So unless this is exp uh, expanded, either reverse to uh, what we were, we were before, or even beyond it, because. Let me give you an insight. If you want to have peace, there must be justice and equity. Sure. True. Now, you have 37, uh, if you look at the status, it talks about members of the FA, Football Association. Who are these members? As far as the status is concerned, are uh, the FA chairman, the elites, the coaches, referees and players. Now, the effort chairman at 27. Players, two. Referees, two. <laughs> right, yes, referees, two. Then the leads, two. Even the leads, the club owners, or rather the club owners, are not the one voting. 
Mm. You and have the chairman of the NMC and the chief operating officer are the ones who are voting on behalf of the clause, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. Which is wrong. The clause is supposed to vote for themselves. Then, coaches, they have coaches association in all the 37 states of Nigeria. The workplace, they have branches in all the 37 states, like the United States. Mm. So if they are all equally members of the Congress or members of the FA, it needs to be why extended. should every chairman with equal status before the, uh, the, 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 the status have 37 members, then the referees are having two and the coaches having two. So under the principle of fairness and justice, Reference associations always have 536. Exactly. 37. The coaches always have 37. Then the players, uh, the clubs, should have 20 since they are the ones in the team. Then the other leagues should also have uh, the same number. Even if they are not going to be all, since some of them are into maybe two pots, you have A and B. Let each of the pots elect their own 10 representatives and uh, be also 10 representatives in making them 20 like the NL, NNL. Then there are 22 like the Premier League. So the NNL, the same thing. Women League, the same thing. So are 20, 20. So all leagues have 20 representatives. Then the referee is 36. Uh, coaching is 36. Then players union also. They can have branches all over the world to have over 36. That is equity. So by the time you have about 150 or 200, then we can talk about you become president of Nigeria World Federation. It's like becoming president of Nigeria. You have to work hard. You have to go around, sell your manifesto, sell who you are, and work so hard. Not to just put some people who you can lock them in one hotel and give them one, one million and you are already president. Hmm. That shouldn't be. So that is. One, so that is why I am saying that status has to be really amended. Then another thing that we must do to make the executive committee less attractive is to make sure that being a president of the foundation or a member of the executive committee, you are not an executive president or executive member where you come and sit down in the office because. That's what they have turned the NFA now into an employment agency. Hmm. People who are jobless, they just come and take position and pay and make the secretary of abundance. Hmm. Let them come, it should be a part time job. And then they started to say, member of the executive committee of the NFA, part time job, go and have your job. If they are jobless, then they apply for jobs somewhere. But for this, <laughs> let it be executive committee, you come and meet to. Four times a year, once a quarter, hmm. prepare policy positions, policy documents, and give it to the head of secretary, the secretary general, and the directors and head of the department to implement. Every quarter, they give you a report. So you go to your job. The president of uh, Moroccan uh, Football Federation is the minister of finance. Hmm. Do you think you have time to go and be running uh, the federation? Hmm. He sit down and meet to, to provide a, a direction to the secretariat to implement. What we have in NFA today, we don't have a secretariat. They to make the secretary redundant. All they need to do, they are supposed to empower the staff, group, uh, in, increase their capacity, in, improve their welfare, Provide them with a level environment to do their job and let the secretaries be part of what they're supposed to be. But almost all of them, including uh, Ramaji, they have told the place as if they are office because they don't have any other job. They come and sit down there. Let anybody tell me their job. Hmm. They sit down there daily. The, the secretaries staff are not allowed to do their job. They are taking over everything players' recruitment, players' welfare, leaders of delegation. Traveling uh, plans, everything they are doing is as if you don't have staff in the secretary. That is wrong. So, these are, for me, these are key fundamentals. Then again, lastly, the issue of 
the legality of the federation itself. Because as it is today, the MF, MFF is illegal. What is known to Nigerian laws is Nigerian Football Association. Exactly. There's nothing like MFF. MFF is illegal. It doesn't exist. If you like, go out and go to lectures under MFF 100 times. In as much as that legality issue is not established or is not corrected, then you will be operating under illegality in a minute. Because the laws of Nigeria know only NFP. Yes. There is a court declaration that says NFA is what is known to Nigeria constitution. NFF is not known to Nigeria constitution. It's there. It's everybody knows it. Most stakeholders they know it. So we pretend we are just moving. So these are for me fundamentally three things we must put together before that election. Hmm. Deep word, Aji. Uh, uh, okay has a question for you, but before Okwe's question, uh, let me just ask this one because uh, there have been rumors uh, circulating in the media about your intentions uh, to run for the president, uh, talking about the NFF president in the September 30th NFF elections. But we want to hear from you, Aji. We don't want to hear rumors. We don't want to hear gossips. Here on Mainland 98.3 FM, we don't deal with gossips. We deal with exclusive, real yeah. facts. So, Aji, Ahmed, Shuaibu Garagumbi, I want to ask you straight and direct, are you running for the NFF presidential election? Yes, I am going to run, but with a caveat. Okay. What is the caveat? And that caveat, as caveat is that that status has to be amended because I cannot go into any contest that is not all-inclusive. Hmm. As it is now, it's not all-inclusive is being controlled by a few cabal and it cannot work. I can't go into such areas. And again, the second thing, because the part to caveat is that we don't even see the rules yet. The rules are not out and I cannot go into a competition without knowing the rules. Let the electoral committee come up with the guidelines. So when they come up with the guidelines of the election, then we will see whether it is an election or a guideline that is all inclusive or it's arbitrary. So only when these two things are done, then I will make my own final uh, decision about it. It's but really, I, I, have, I have received hundreds of calls, messages, all over the place, urging me to come and try to be the president of Nigeria Football Association. I will be willing to serve. But I cannot do it alone. So all stakeholders have to come together. It doesn't have to be me. But provided the right thing can be done, I am ready to support whoever can do the job. But I will give you the time if these things are done. But I nothing is going to change on Nigerian football. Nothing, just nothing, nothing will change. You must amend that status. It's a must. Mm. Okay, I'll add you. Uh, thank you for that exclusive. Well, you've heard it here first. Okay, you still have a question for Al Aji? Yeah, um, just quickly. Um, well, good to have you join us again. I think we had the session in just a couple of years back. Okay, um, you talked about um the operation of the LM of the um, NFF. NFF, the status quo. But I want us to go back a little as regards the operation of the LMC. Now, we heard that uh, there's been conversation on the table that there's going to be an abridged version for the N uh, for the MPFL. MPFL next season. You actually held sway as the chairman of, uh, you know, Gombe Football Association. As at that time, Gombe United was the bride of almost everyone in the MPFL. You were playing a beautiful brand of football. You know, people were trooping in to watch the game. What do you think is the problem that we have within the LMC, especially with the level of inconsistency? We don't have title sponsors. The uh, the Plateau United team that won the league in 2016 under Kennedy Boboy have still not been paid their title winning amount, which is supposed to be 50 million naira. What exactly is wrong with the status quo of the LMC? Yes, in the first place, the foundation of the LMC itself it was built based on fraud. 
Can, can, you, can you expatiate on that, sir? What? Can you expatiate on that statement? You said the, the foundation yes, was that is, what, that, that, is, that, is, that is what I'm coming to. The LMC said they are independent organization. Hmm. And they know they are not independent. They draw their legitimacy from an agency established by government. That agency happens to be Nigerian Football Association as provided for by Nigerian Football Association Act 2004. Hmm. Now, the Corporate Affairs Commission by registered LMC to manage the league could not have registered it or with NPFR to manage the league if the NFA does not give them a letter of no objection or letter of consent. And that letter of consent gave them 99 years now to manage the league for 99 years. That is what they are holding us on now. So what we are saying is that which kind of fraud is that? Like you take a public institution and give it to a private person to manage for 99 years. It doesn't follow. Now, that is number one. Number two, when the LMC came, the very first reason why they were allowed, they said they have capacity to bring sponsors. But it's not true. Their own fallacies. It's fraudulent. Hmm. The sponsors they made even less. Blue less. Super sports left. And all these sponsors that are going, that was the reason why they were going. Due to bad governance and bad management of the league, recklessness, corruption, lack of accountability, a lack of transparency, all that delivering the, 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 the LLC. So they all go. So because a lack of credibility and trust deficits, between the corporate world and the league. Yeah. Mm. That is why we do not have sponsors. And that is where we are to today. Hmm. Hmm. So if, if you manage to eventually, uh, maybe the status quo was, you know, it's been changed amended. and amended and taken back to NFF, and you contest, as you said, and you win the election, what exactly would be your priority? I know you to be someone that loves grassroots. I remember under Gombe United, uh, almost 40% of the players of Gombe United were product of various academies. And they brought some level of success to the team. What would be your priority if you eventually emerge as the president of the NFA, according to what you said? My first priority is to empower the secretariat. I will organize the secretariat. I will make sure every department in that secretariat is functional. You can imagine a director of the department of an embassy does not have a car and a house. He has never gone for any capacity building training for five, six years. How can they function? What? Exactly. He cannot function. Nobody can function. We then have a functional technical department in Nigeria for Association today. No department is functional. Because their job has been taken over by the executive committee. Hmm. So that would be my first priority to reorganize the secretariat and get the best hands that can handle it and empower them. And I will I will never I would not care going there. I will be having only one meeting per quarter in the whole year of four four months. If it is a competition, let the competition department go and organize the competition and provide whatever that is supposed to. But almost every committee now, every function in the secretariat is taken over by executive committee members. There is one member of the executive committee that is handling five portfolios. Five portfolios. Only me, one person. So, how do you like that? Then, that is why you said that's my own priority. You didn't have me my priorities. I could have also go on and on and on. But that is number one priority. So that I can have rest. Okay. Alaji, thank you very, very much. We really have to let you go now. But uh, it's been a pleasure having you uh, with us this, this evening. Alaji Ahmed Shwaibu Gara Gumbi. Thank you very much uh, for taking our time out of your very busy schedule.
uh, to have this interview with us, Alaji. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, my brother. It's uh, my pleasure. And you guys, I uh, keep on the good work. And I uh, hope to speak with you anytime soon. No, no problem, Alaji. No problem. Uh, we are always here, and we will see uh, get you on board as things uh, manifest in the uh, forthcoming uh, September thirtieth NFF election. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Okay, wow, exclusive, yeah, exclusive on Milland ninety-eight point three FM Sport Cruise. Yes, you've heard it here first. Um, Alaji Ahmed Shwaibu Galagumbi would contest for the September 30th NFF forthcoming elections if, that's the caveat, if the statute of the NFF is being amended. The way it is right now, the odds are stacked against anybody who is not a federation chairman. chairman. It's, it's the odds are stacked against them the numbers is not even fair and the lmc okay i want to take get your take on this before uh, i open the phone lines the lmc registered as a private company <laughs> in the name of an individual oh my God. for 99 years and the part of the nff <laughs> is not legal the constitution the federal constitution of nigeria in 1999 uh, constitution of nigeria does not recognize, the recognize the statute of the nff that's the rules and regulations the code of conduct the do's and the don'ts guiding the nff it is the nfe that is being recognized okay <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't understand why you have to come at me. <laughs> uh, uh, you, I, I, think, I think it was yesterday when we were going home yes, that we talked it. about this. Yes, yeah, I will... told you guys. Now, one of the problems that we have in it, Nigeria... It, 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 for... like, like it's a personal property. I will the LMC to you for 99 years. They said, <laughs> I, when this matter came up, I think I heard about this like over a year ago or two years ago. And the first question I asked the person is, the LMC means the League Management Committee. It's company. Sorry, the league management company. What league are you managing? The league of Nigeria. So why would you register the LMC as a private, private entity? Yeah. You register the LMC at the Corporate Affairs Commission as a private entity with the ownership for 99 years. So I'm asking, <laughs> why would individuals... Who, who even approved that? I mean, not, I mean, no, it's, it's not what you present to them. Well, I, mean, not, I may not necessarily be a fan of Garagumbi. He's someone I know for a while. But if you want to actually make him talk, just ask him the right question. And that's exactly what he did on the show today. He's always had his issue with Amadou Pinik. But then look at the facts that we have on ground. Do we have functional secretariat in this country? No. Do we have technical director in this country? No. When was the last time they even paid you know, the salaries we, of the staff of we, the NFL? We, 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 we have we a technical had. advisor. You know Gajola? <laughs> I like his style. No, he's his style. No, that's... that's <laughs> the, I mean, Techni the, 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 person that could, the person that couldn't, even, that couldn't even give us anything is the one no. that we brought back today. You, you can see my gesticulation. If, uh, you if, know Gajola? If, if I, I like his style. I'm sure a lot of people didn't watch the manager. Well, Triple is referring to uh, Austin the yeah, well. interview <laughs> during the Nations Cup where we won the first three games and they voted him the manager of the group stage mm, manager of the group and stage and then they interviewed him on the eve of the round of 16 <laughs> match or there about mm. that who is his who is his mentor yeah, who yeah, does yeah. he coach after he yeah, said is yeah. is you know Guardiola he, he's, he was doing his hair like this do you know Guardiola yes I, I, like, his I, I like, like his style, style. <laughs> <laughs> and then I mean, he he like <laughs> <laughs> so that's what, that's exactly where we are right now see what guy go be have said now it actually stared the next a lot of okay, conversation 11 will days to the election mm. today is 19th 11 days to the elections the part of we do those that even want to compete like if you want to compete now you don't know the guidelines you don't know the rules and regulations I've always why said is it. this not open to everybody i've always said it everything they do in the nff is done in secrecy like it's, it's a secret, secret court, court. When title sponsor comes, they will not tell us the actual amounts that they're giving them. When TV rights comes, they will not tell us the actual amounts that they're giving them. I'm sure they will not even tell us because when TV right comes, you have to give the people that are producing the content the larger chunk of the money, well, which is yeah. the club side. Yes. Mm -hmm. They won't even let us know how much the club sides are receiving. When title sponsor comes, title of what? 
title uh, of the Nigeria Professional Football uh, League. Uh, uh, Club uh, uh, owners uh, uh, should have a say. Uh, Let me even uh, tell you one of the abnormalities that we have in this country. In this same country, we have the chairman of Club Owners Association of Nigeria that does not have a club. <laughs> Hold on. So, so more like saying somebody that is this, the principal uh, association principal of principals that does not have a school. Okay. Does that surprise you? No. Should we no. list no. all of these abnormalities? Let's open the phone lines. Let, let's just open the phone lines. I know a, a lot of persons will say, "Oh, when it comes to Nigerian sport, they don't want to talk about it." But see, if we don't talk about it now, the NFF elections is coming. Things will not change. That is why we conduct interviews like this. That is why we are talking about this. Eleven days to the NFF elections. If we don't talk about it now, if we don't make the noise now. You sit there and you say you don't want to talk about this, it's frustrating you, is this, is that. The next four years, whatever decision is being made, you just have to accept it. Do you like the state of Nigerian football right now? If you don't, call in and have your say. 0913-600-0410. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, your name and where you're calling from? Kofi Mensa, the Ghanaian border. Kofi Mensa, let's have your take quickly. This Nigeria matter of fire power. Yes, I'm feeling the pain in my voice. Your own, your own league is your own league is running now. Every yeah, yeah, my own league is running. Your league now. People, ah, bye bye. Fish chops from the weekend. Come again. Fish chops from the weekend. Yes, I will. I know that that one concern you. Uh, you know, Allah, Ghana is in order. <laughs> <laughs> so you really do not have business talking about this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, with the NFF, eh? 0913-600-0410. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, your name and where you're calling from, please. Hello. Your name and where you're calling from. Thank you. Okay, uh, do well to call us back. Uh, probably network uh, connectivity difficulty, the, whatever that was. Hello, good evening. <laughs> Baba me, baba me, baba me, I dare for you. <laughs> baba me, baba me, baba me, I dare for you. Eh? Your name and where you are calling from? Good evening, good evening. Sir. Good evening, welcome. Gerard, the goalkeeper from Agoda. Ah, Gerard, not Steven. Welcome on board. Let's have your take. See, uh, one of the presenters say uh, Casemiro won four Champions League, not four, it's five. It's five, yes, 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 it's five, it's five. five. Uh, uh, Thank you very so much. I've Talk about the NFF, the NFF. leave Casemiro. Talk so about the NFF. The NFF, I'm not the premier to just move on, and you know, even in Tate or even the deal at all. Mm. Let him just sit at home and watch everything going on. Mm. Okay. That is my take on that. Thank so you very I'm much. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, your name and where you are calling from, please. Yes, my name is uh, Baladabi. I'm calling from Ijai. Okay, welcome on board. Let's have your take. Yeah. yeah. So, what we are talking about, uh, Nigeria football. Uh, please, can somebody tell me what this uh, present NSS chairman, after he left office, can say he achieved throughout his ex yes. This man has been given all opportunity in this world. I don't think there is any NFL chairman since uh, I have been nominated, I mean, you, that stop eight years in office without achieving anything. Still, it's only you that get our football to turn to the people executives, but without doing anything to our football. Mm. I think, uh, you know, uh, the participant in that election should do the next thing. Mm. They should find somebody that will come, you know, and revolutionize our football. Because we cannot compare like that. Look at our league. Look at our list of first you know, you know? So we need somebody that will come, you know, and lead by example and revolutionize our football so that we can compete with any other nation in this world. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your take. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes. Uh, Raymond. Raymond. Yeah. <laughs> How on that day? Exclusive don't drop, but I took my for the matter with the table. Okay, what about today? They don't come today. <laughs> <laughs> On a day like this, <laughs> you you see it tomorrow. Yeah? If Papa don't collect, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have a don't just come out. <laughs> see, uh, I, I I want to ask a question. What are the duty specifications of LM? <laughs> to manage the league. Everything concerning <laughs> the league. 
which league are they managing? The NPFL. This, 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 our, this our league, is it managed? Well. Does it look like a league that is managed <laughs> by anybody? Mm. And, uh, and, and secondly, why is a, a country as big as Nigeria always deceived and fooled? You register a public institution with, under the name of one person as a one-man business for almost 100 years. In short, I don't, I, I don't know the, I, I don't know the, years. I don't know the implication of this. I'm yet to understand Nigeria and where Nigeria is going. I'm yet to understand Nigerian football and where Nigerian football is going. At this, at, at this point, so many people will be confused. And you said that people said that they are not concerned with Nigeria, Niger, Nigerian football, NPFL. The only, the only thing is that many people don't know where to start, where, what to say, and what not to say. So how can they contribute? So that is the problem. Sorry, I, I right now I'm confused. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope that uh, this uh, confusion ends tonight. Eh? I hope it ends even after the NFF election. Well, in case you are listening to us, uh, we are online on all social media platforms. Uh, you can also listen anywhere in the world by downloading the uh, Radio Garden app. Search for Mainland 98.3 fm right there you will get us you'll be able to listen to us wherever you go except there is no network there's no connectivity aside from that you can always uh listen to us hello good evening good evening triple and the guys in the studio yes good evening, good evening. your name and where you're calling from yeah my name is Ojibwe. i'm calling all the way from america yes i saw in the yeah South Carolina from the United States of America. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome yeah. on board. Let's uh, have your take. What I want to say, yeah, yeah. What I want to say is that we don't have to say much because our, our sport is just a reflection of our politics. Mm. If, if we don't get our politics right, so that's that's. I don't think we can get anything done. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, get the politics right and get things done in the Nigerian sporting fraternity. Hello, Hello. good evening. Yeah, wonderful evening to you guys. Ah, Steven, Steven John. John. Long time. <laughs> yeah, I've been busy. Um, my name is Steven John. Nigerian from Shwaibu Karagombe. He's the man I know that he can shall you your way. Well, 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 well. <laughs> So he's the camera of Shalai FC. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Uh, funny enough, I had I had an interview of him before joining you guys, and I'm very happy to hear him twice this evening. Mm. So, you well said from him, well said. But then, uh, one thing remains that when when they are in power, at the heart of power, they only see solution to the problem. Mm. But when they get in there, they don't get to do what the first come for we do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to wish him the best. Even though I'll be surprised if at the end of the day we get the same of the same. Early this morning I had um Amaju Phoenix saying he's going to force himself on um on on whoever is going to become president, particularly is um two uh, guys in uh Shia Kiomi and um Shio Diko. He's going to force himself to help them. I don't know who asked him for it to, to help you. He has <laughs> yeah. left, he has left. He should not, he should not force himself, he, no, he should not he help. Said, I know he, said, he, he well. said he will not interfere, but he will intervene. Uh, oh, join now. He should not force himself, <laughs> he should not intervene. He, he should not be going, he should go and rest. Mm. He should go and rest. I don't know, because um, he has tried for himself. That's what I would say. He's, 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 he's a person that, for me, he has um, climbed the ladder of success from Delta State Chairman to NFL to CAF. I'm even wishing him the best to become a president. He has applied a uh, flag high, personally, but our football has not improved under him at all. Okay. So we should just go. I'm happy about that. And I will not be surprised because, according to Gagumbi, if the, if the 36 uh, FC chairman, if power is in their hands, I don't think we will have change. Because uh, for me, I, I'm looking forward to an ex-international becoming 
uh, the, the NFL so mm. and I'm looking mm. towards Peter Saidi mm. because um, with the connection he has with um, um, superstars and stuff like that, with what he has said thus far, I, I think he's the right mm. man. Yes, he's the right mm. man. Mm. It's mm. time for ex internationals because they are players, they know the feeling of players and stuff like that. Not all these um, uh, glorified politicians coming in to become like um, they care about our future, mm. okay. rather they care about their, their pocket. Thank you and God bless okay. you. Guys. Thank you, Stephen John, for your contribution. Um, well, let's take some messages. We've got some messages in here. So let's take some messages. This one says, um, okay, okay. Good evening, guys. Uh, Real Madrid are planning a move for Tottenham if it appear Emi Oibe as a replacement for Casemiro. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, well, uh, well you should expect a lot of rumors at this uh, point in time. This one says, uh, good evening, guys, in the studio, please. Uh, okay. Uh, we've corrected that Casemiro as five UEFA Champions League titles. Yeah. This one says, uh, Hi guys, Chelsea should uh, 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 cut off Aubameyang deal and never do any business with Barca again. How can you buy a 33-year-old player for free from Arsenal in January? I want to sell the player to Chelsea above 20 million pounds. It's business. Uh, it's business. As for Manchester United, signing Casemiro without Modric Cruz is like signing Varane for the second time. Jacob Cool. <laughs> that last part, eh? <laughs> Good evening, guys. Casemiro, okay. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we can't take any calls uh, so far. We can't take any uh, more calls. We can't take any more messages. But we'll be back tomorrow. Sports Spectacular, 2 to 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. It's been a pleasure. And we also uh, had uh, Al-Aji Shwaibu, uh, Gara Gumbi uh, on the show this evening. But uh, we'll be back, just like I mentioned tomorrow. Big thanks to uh, uh, Shwaibu Gara Gumbi. And also, uh, Okwe, not leaving out Ola Olua Oni, and myself and everyone who tune in and join the conversation. Uh, we'll be back on Saturday. Enjoy more exciting content on Mainland 98.3 FM.
five minutes past seven. This is a rainy day in the city. But you know on this time I know what we do at this time on this frequency at on mainland ninety eight point three. We talk to the people at the top. It is called Voices from the Top and Joseph for long and short definitely joins me in the studio today. Uh, Joseph it's back to have you back in Lagos. Uh, it was not the best of time last month. Uh, last week, you were out of Lagos in Cross River. I told you I was going to get across to you uh, to tell us how Cross River is. Would you like to relocate? <laughs> no, Cross River, first, good evening, Lagos. Yeah, good, good evening, yourself. Good, good evening, Lagos. Good evening, Lagos. Good evening, yes. Nigeria. And uh, Cross River is fine, but uh, like what I was telling that day, it's as if. Uh, if I have my way, I will ask the cross civilians <laughs> to find a way to reach uh, uh, the former governor of Cross River, say Donald Duke, and say you can be maybe a consultant to the governors that that is coming. Because this, two, the other two governors after him, yeah, the Moke, the current uh, uh, Professor think, Ben Ayadi. Yes, I think uh, f- there are a lot of things that are not uh, that have been. It's as if you depart from the progressive way that the state has been when Donald Duke was there. If you, before, starting from the airport, airport in the international airport, uh, Calabar is, do you know that the entire airport, there's no single, there's no single ATM in that airport. Talk of, say, you in can... In the whole of international airport, yes, in Calabar. Yes, Calabar. Um, I move, if you go to that place... No, no ATM. No, see, at least you know international airport, whether MM2 or MM1, at least the element of bank, they even you can even go to normal bank to get bank I'm service. I'm talking yeah. of ATM, it's not even present in the international, but airport. that should be the job of fine, or should it be the fact that the go- state no, no, government no, no, has no, not no. made the it, state it, yeah, airport no, no. attractive? If I'm a governor of that state, apart. I will have to collaborate with some federal government agencies because that will benefit me more than even the federal government. You understand it will benefit me more because when people enter that airport and they say that is you can do a lot of airport supposed to be like a mini country whereby mm-hmm. you can do a lot of transaction within the airport someone can land in an airport do what you want to do and go back to uh, uh, just this statement of yours so one close person to me just relocated to america two days ago when he got to washington he did a video call ah he said jaydan i don't the yankee <laughs> when it moved from Washington to, well, I think it's going to South Carolina. So you, had, you went to Denver and a few other places. At every airport, it's conversation changed. He own. said, "Jay, the, you know, you don't say you don't relocate." So <laughs> that guy don't go again. No, as I die from the airport, then where you now go to places the Ogudu Ranch is, it's no longer. They should change the name. It's no longer the Ogudu Ranch because it's a turn to another different entirely. A place that you don't even see light. The place is turning to ghost of itself. So at least I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes, and that's the reason you say you give it to Lagos because many of these guys, after ruling their various, being a governor of those states, they, go to they the relocate. Senate. They no, they relocate to some of the, if those that could not make it down to Senate, they, come they to relocate Lagos. to Lagos or Abuja. Ikoi or no, many times now they be in Lagos because, because Joseph, I have to put you to task on this conversation. So many times we many Lagos Lagosians will argue. That our governor is not doing well, I but know, Lagos State yeah. government will also tell you that the influx of people from across the various other states, the thirty four other states, too much on our own little resources that we are trying to manage. What is happening across the states? Are the governors not doing enough? At least you any, are well traveled. Any, I, I've gone to at least thirteen states, and I've have, have gone to most states, and I've done, and I know that you have this. Anybody that said the governor. Go- Lagos State government is not working or they are not trying. I think the person just deceiving himself. Because the pressure on Lagos is so high. It's so high that sometimes I imagine how they meet up. Is it the Okada? Is it the Kekena Marwa? Is it the Danfu? And, and some of these guys, they are not making any serious input. Anything that would generate tr- the activity is not giving money to the government. Some of the activity, some people, just some people that are in Lagos, they don't rent any place to stay. They don't even pay any taxes. They don't pay any taxes. They don't pay rent. They don't pay. And government still take care of these people. The policeman that is there, that yes, federal government pay them salary. Lagos is support them. They are equally providing service for these people that are not contributing. Some of them are not contributing anything to to bring it come to Lagos State. So Lagos State is. If you say Lagos is not try, just try another state. Make you go there. Go just try like another two state. Weeks. You now see. 
one week that I stay in that place, in fact, do you know sometimes we will use uh, maybe almost one five to do transport to go and eat 500 naira food? <laughs> Why? Eh? Because you have to go to inside Calabar for you to go and eat. Because I was, try I was very close to Bakasi and all that. I was just trying to explore some of all those places. What was the update on Bakasi? Same as the same. For the same and the same. But JD, the people that actually allow Bakasi to go, go, ah uh, no, they should be one of the worst enemy of Nigeria. I'm sorry to put it. But you know the government now. You no, want, I don't you, know you want mention the, I don't know the people. I'm or a, you want mention the consultants? I am a, I am a fan of fella. <laughs> so <laughs> you always talk so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't talk too much. No, it doesn't talk too much. <laughs> well, let's talk about other things. Uh, we must give kudos to the men of the Nigerian Armed Forces in the last one week two weeks i think there's been a lot of pressure on uh, the the bandits and and all of these other terrorists in some part of nigeria i think sometimes we should uh, beyond uh, giving them knocks sometimes we should also give them kudos well maybe let me follow nigeria to give them kudos but as a professional when you talk of issue of crime i won't give them kudos okay the Why? reason is the reason is i can bet you okay look at your 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 war in quote arrest of some people that say they are the Master responsible right. for JD. If we have to take those things to serial forensic investigation, it's possible that some of those guys they may not be deeply involved on in what actually happened. You know, because we actually go down to find out what actually this kind of people, the type of people that came there. You understand? You know, sometimes it is it, oh no, let's just show something to say we are working. You understand it? See, I used to, I've been doing a lot of things on the uh, UK police, the Metropolitan Police. You can, we just have to be, know that security is a serious business. Not all this, uh, what, uh, how do I put it, just come and do something. The bamboos you, you just, it's, it's not everybody. You understand it? Let's just leave the issue of war and the, the same thing, the one that is going to, if you want to do, as only the president in court did not give a matching order, the question I used to ask is, the DSS, the the military, the police, the civil defense. What is their job? You didn't need the matching order for them to do their job. You Even need, the Fransi governors still insist on the shoot outside for bikes for anybody on bike. Had, and somebody died. Somebody was shot on the bike yesterday in some fire state. Oga, every governor of Lagos has some what we call classified <coughs> information that a lot of us did not know. The governor know what he's saying. Because there's sometimes there's a lot of compromise on the side of people that are supposed not supposed to, you are not supposed to get compromised. Look at the the judgment of uh, this guy uh, Wadume, the, the, the the kidnapper from yes, from Benue State. Because this is many times this is what always happen when some people are interested in the case. Are ah, you charging someone of uh, whatever you escape from? Whereas you know what you're supposed to charge. There are some cases that are lost. You don't blame a judge. I used to tell people, I go to court almost many times. It is what you, the judge is not Father Christmas. It is the cases It is your case. investigation. It is the police investigation that the judge will look and say, do you know what? This is in line with the law of the state. This is my decision. So if you go down and charge anyhow, the judge will give you the judgment that you ask asked for. The judgment that you ask for. So security personnel should only look at it if you don't know what to do consult people they will guide you on what you charge okay uh, let's talk some politics quickly it's been a week of visiting uh, from the man that has been at the heart of even your guests. friend was visited, visited he said you know no she, me uh, tell me Kuti. <laughs> no the thing was i was at the shrine on the day that that conversation was made and you know people like to take th things out of context he said at my age i cannot be obedient i've seen too many things in my lifetime mm. to remain obedient and you know, people who just come there for the first time, take short videos. But a man that spoke comprehensively for more than 10, 15 minutes, you take one minute video, put it on the social media, and because everybody has access to social media, you just come out and talk. So, um, but the man Peter Obi is a very good, is a tactician. I like the fact that he went there to go and... And the thing is, I, I, so people would know, if Ferry Kuti had given an endorsement, the headlines would be different. Hmm. But yes. the headlines, the, there was no head, headlines, there was no categorical statement from Femi Kuti. And if you see the message, just said, oh, we are campaigning on issues and ideas. That's all. You know, if, if it was, if it was, an, if it was a, an endorsement, the headlines would be different. Oh, I'm truly obedient. I'm that, I'm that. But that's not another issue. But Baba Sanjay has been visited like two times this week. Peter Obi was the first person to go there. 
the man Bola Akwe Tinubu was in Ogun State two days ago was also at the Abelgota home of uh, the former president of Nigeria and it was also the 81st birthday of the former president IBB. of Nigeria IBB busy week in politics uh, the issue that you just have to do that policy is a different thing entirely I know a lot of you are saying that uh, why should the, the people that cause the problem why are you not visiting them and the rest of them this is politics you understand because there are some individuals that if you ignore them you're on your own as far as politics is concerned OBJ is one of them IBB is one of them I tell you JD is one of them see why uh, that Juma is one of them <laughs> so, 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 so this guy to some extent as far as Nigeria is concerned they have paid their price Mm. You understand? They, uh, look at a uh, uh, former president of Nigeria, Obasanjo. Obasanjo, I think, is still the current, the 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 chairman or president of all ex uh, ex uh, president of the world. Mm. You understand? Those such individual they can put a call to any some people outside, because you cannot leave some international influence on on some of our local politics. Some country are interested in who become the president of Nigeria. You understand? These are some of the guys that they may be calling in one way or the other. Okay. It is voices from the top. Just as the name implies, we talk to the people at the top. Today, you'll be connecting to Abuja. Yeah. Right? Yes. We'll talk to the man who should know. Anything about the 2023 elections, he will definitely talk to us. Festus Okoye will join us on the show. He's INEC National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voters Education Committee. He will tell us everything we should know about registration. We'll talk about underage voting. We'll talk about how to take out names of double registration. we we'll also talk about how to clean the, how to clean the, clean the registrar. we we'll also talk about the fact that some people say that maybe it's about time INEC is trying to de-enfranchise some people. Mm. All of these conversations will be on the show. We'll also connect to Lagos first. Yeah. We'll no, talk, I think uh, there are some issues in Alaba. Was it on Tuesday? People said that there are some... People are trying to create... Actually, we found out that it was a fake news. People say that uh, there are some... Some people are uh, harassing or uh, so, uh, uh, trying to create crisis that some people wear some individual cloth or uh, cap and the rest of them. And we found out that it was fake. So I, we need to clear it from the people that know. I even spoke to some... I saw something on Twitter yesterday also where they said uh, somebody was wearing the face cap of a certain candidate was mm. beaten to stupor. The election hearing has not started and there's so much calumny in the society. Mm. What if election hearing campaign starts? What would happen? Voice from the top is the show. It's mainland 98.3 FM. Once we come back from this break, we'll start connecting to our guests and we'll have a comprehensive show on the frequency. Give me a doubt, Dr. On. This is a station of first choice at this time. <laughs>
Mainland 98.3 FM, the sound of Lagos. Yes, let's take our first guest, the President General of Alaba International Market. Uh, he has been on the show before. Yes. Uh, we did have a conversation about the fact that they said some people in that part, you know the Alaba International Market, there's no doubt that it's largely dominated by some members of a certain region in Nigeria. And there's always bad news from that time. Most times, it is misinformation. One of such misinformation happened this week where it was said that a certain, certain individuals were being harassed. harassed because they are in support of a certain candidate from our own part of town, right? Yeah. So we would have uh, Paulinus, Evangelist Paulinus Ogochiko join us on the show. He will tell us what the update is in that respect. We'll also talk to our own friend, uh, Honorable Jude. Jude. Emeka. Emeka. Idumogu, who is... Uh, he's, he's supposed to be an Igbo, but he says he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a, a nationalist. You know, yeah, what's, that, <laughs> is, uh, what's his, uh, his, his name, Seth? I don't he, forget his name. No, we'll ask him. Uh, uh, Olabi or okay. something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's still voice from the top on Mainland 98.3 FM. Uh, during the course of the show, we would also take... Uh, we will take... Uh, during the course of the show also, we will take uh, calls from you. 0913-600-0410 is the number to call. Good evening, Evangelist. Uh, good evening, how are you? Very well, thank you. It is Jay and Joseph on the radio. Welcome to Milan FM, Alaji. Uh, I said Alaji. Evangelist. <laughs> <laughs> and we have on the show uh, Evangelist Paulino Sugochiko, who is the yeah. President General of Alaba International Market. Yes. Uh, Evangelist, is it true that your people in Alaba are harassing some people because they are supporting a certain candidate? It's a still lie, man. I cannot do that. They are, they, a lot of the people is a peace loving people. Mm. And uh, we everybody have a right to choose whoever you want to vote. So, what happened? So we cannot do it's, a, it's, a, it's a lie from the pit of hell. Mm. Only that the man, the person that arrived for a lot of us, maybe he wants to use it to cause problems between the people and the universe. They have apologized. The good thing is that the man has apologized that somebody tell him. Uh, it's not happened to him. There's somebody told me that uh, when we were, many people are wearing uh, Tunubu uh, uh, T-shirt. Uh, when Tunubu uh, uh, organization visited me, they give us a lot of T-shirt and uh, cap, and uh, people are the people are dragging it to give them, and they are wearing it to the market. And the majority of people that are in this uh, Tunubu vanguard, majority of them they are Igbos. I'm just going to have the Aibos. This is the politics. Everybody has a right to, uh, to vote whoever you want to vote. But, okay, and we are not uh, doing uh, politics with bitterness. Let me ask you uh, a quick question. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. We just Hello? Know, are you listening? Can you hear me, sir? Hello? Can you hear me, Evangelist? Hello? Oh, wow. We can't, uh, we can't really hear. We, we try and collect back to him. I wanted to ask him this question. There's no doubt that one of the leading candidates in the election... Is from the southeast part of the country and you know it's in, in, in some ways it will cause maybe uh, no, uh, we versus them no, no jd i think give it to mm. the the evil they are peace loving Ev evangelist yeah yeah quick one so one of the leading candidates for the election in 2023 is from the southeast uh, but don't you think that itself in itself would cause some form of disharmony uh, from your landlords and you who are from that part we of the country. Close to it's not in, in not going to cost any politics is an interest. Maybe uh if I vote to Nobu tomorrow and uh I that is where I will benefit tomorrow. I will I will like him to be president so that I will benefit. And how politics is everybody is uh, looking for who is where he's going to benefit. So wow. that is uh, yeah, everybody yeah. have right to choose whoever you want to vote for. Okay. Oh. It's not for every woman we vote for it or be. Not every Yoruba man will vote for Tunubu. So it's, a, it's a choice. So oh. you make choice of who you're going to vote. You, you, you cannot, uh, uh, cannot, uh, uh, cannot uh, tell people to vote with this way. No. Oga Polinos, let me first say that uh, I appreciate your effort because this is, this should be the second or third issue that is coming up now. The way you only quickly come out and say, this is not correct. You know the issue of people want to register and people are, and you quickly came out and said, no, 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 this is not the correct information. This one. So we are just praying that please continue with this, your peaceful and uh, 
the way you want it to be everywhere you are. You know, you know, you know that you know that that uh, that Miss Miss Johnson, man, Miss Miss Johnson. Yeah, the actress. Miss William, Miss William, Miss William. Even that does now. Then we have this table. So you go through, I said, then you go through, go through the lab and you go and say, yeah, each uh, tribu, uh, yeah, each other and the cap. Going everywhere. <coughs> nobody, nobody molested you, nobody is calling. After that, you put it in the Facebook everywhere. Say that all, all this is a fake news. Hmm. Our people is not like that. Our people is not like that. You know, our, our, our people is not like that. After all, tribu and the people, they are all, they are all fresh. Yeah. Why, why are we going to kill ourselves when they are offered? They are eating to mm. yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Evangelist. <laughs> and continue the good work. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. All Thank right. you very much. Because the election is quite sensitive in terms of the division in, in, in the religious background of who are competing or who are contesting for the primary goal of being the president of Nigeria, we also have to find a way to balance all the religious sentiments the ethnic and sentiment the ethnic that, that arises during this election. And I think it's only important that Evangelist Paulinus should be on the show. It's no doubt that Alaba International Market is one of the major no, That place is like a country of its own. Yes, so... The good there is... Uh, in fact, Igbo people are very, very peaceful. It's only sometimes some individuals want to just create problem when there's no problem. And I appreciate some the leadership of the market. And I call it pray that all other market, the leaders should key into to show that we are we are want to do business not crisis not problem quickly on the show also in that regard we have somebody who is from that extraction but is in the house in lagos is representing the great people of uh, Osho 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 Solo Solo constituency one. one good evening honorable jude Hello. No, Osho Osho Solo constituency two. Two, constituency two. Uh, honorable good evening yes so yes so welcome to voices from the top <laughs> nice to have you again Honorable. Uh, hello, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, Good evening, everybody. Yes, so honorable. Quickly, the, the the ethnic differences in all of the in our ca ca presidential candidates for the year for the year 2023 election would give you a reason to doubt if your people really want us to. How do I use the word now? Do you think there's any religious sentiment or ethnic sentiment that is affecting you because you are from the southeastern part of the country at this time? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, can honorable, you? can you hear us? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Now, sir. Yeah, honorable. So, uh, many times in the news, we are getting to hear that people who are from the southeastern part of the country are being attacked yeah. by some people who have friends or fans of a certain candidate. We also hear that at some time in the Alabama International Market, the people from the southeastern part of the country also are attacking the Yoruba people. Do, do you well, think there's any there's there uh, there are fake, news. fake news how do we manage how do we manage them? crisis especially ethnic and religious sentiments during the course of this election campaign well the the, the issue there is that uh, nigeria should look at the best candidates we should we should put ethnicity as even though yeah, ethnicity has been one of the things that is also developing our um our 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 country per se but but for me, I think we should put it aside. Uh, but, uh, the way we are today, we should we should talk less uh, and not allow ethnicity to influence us all to all that much. Even if we want it to influence, let it influence us positively. We should we should talk about peace. To start with, we are all, all one Nigeria. We are one Nigeria, irrespective of anything. We are one as a Nigeria, and anything, even whatever that affects us today. Affect everybody, whether you are Igbo, Yoruba, or Hausa. So, what we need is peace and understanding. Yes, um, the truth is that um, an Igbo man, I'm an Igbo man, an Igbo man is on the balance of the next election. That, that's just it. But, but at the same time, we ethnicity will not drive the election only, and ethnicity will not make um, any candidate win election. What matters is how good is that a uh, candidate? A candidate that is I'll say have a, a crossbreed, a candidate that can win over from other e ethnicity, a, a, a candidate that can go above board. That's what we want. And um, and um, for me, I, I keep on saying it that a candidate that affected lives of even 
most other ethnic ethnicity in Nigeria, in terms of Yoruba, Igbo, a candidate that can come out now, you have people that will tell you, though, this man made me. So that no matter where they are coming from, and that is why I always advocate for Ashwa Dibola and Mexico, because he has, he has he is somebody that, look at me, he gave me support as a person. If I don't forget again, okay, in fact, even today, I know that Faleke, even, even uh, James Faleke, is from Kogi State. But look at the level he has gotten to him in, in, in leadership because of the support of uh, Ashwa Dibola. He's been representing Ikeja um, uh, in House of Rep. This, this is a Kogi man, no? you understand? So when you look at those industries, if Ashwa Dibola did not support those kind of uh, um, uh, base or state in Lagos State, which other state can do all those things? Mm. It's because of the foundation. Mm. Even when you look at even my evil brothers and sisters, they dominate the market today. All the market in Lagos State, you see, that market in Lagos State, over 80%, over even 90%, they are only boost. That's to also without um, 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 sentiment. Okay. They occupy that place. Nobody allows them. So for me, we need that kind of visionary leader that can okay. always take Nigeria. And, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Jude, Honorable Jude, in 60 seconds, what yes. Lagos State, as far as Nigeria is concerned, is a peaceful state that yes. everybody, anybody come to Lagos and you want to benefit from Lagos. How do we continue to improve on the peace and harmony coexistent in Lagos? In 60 seconds. No, the, the issue is that Lagos is, is doing well. It's just understanding between all the ethnic groups. Let us see ourselves as one. Whether Igbo, Aosa, or Yoruba, wherever you are coming from. And that's why, you know, Lagos, like the name say, Lagos is an self excellence. Because of that, it, it welcome every... It's today, let me tell you, the truth that Lagos today is the is America or UK of most Nigerians. Now the Northerners are coming to Lagos. Easterners are coming to Lagos. Even those Yoruba within the Yoruba state are also coming to Lagos. Because if they see Lagos as a, 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 safe, a safe heaven today, when you talk about insecurity, Lagos today is outstanding. Not starting to shake Lagos. So for me, I want to also commend the government of Lagos to commend the Ashwari Bola Metu who have been building this foundation. So only in particular, I give them kudos and give them APC government for doing what they are doing. I want to maintain the peace, tranquility, and the security nature of Lagos State, and we can always live as one happy family, one Lagos, one Nigeria in Lagos State. Okay, quickly before I let you go, Honorable, quick question. Yeah. So recently there was an announcement that there will be more, there has been an increase in the amount of LCDs and local government that Alcala has been banned. Uh, as a representative of the people, especially one of your constituency has been banned, Alcala has been banned in one no, of the your constituency. constituency. Your con in, 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 <laughs> the whole of the solo now. Oshudi solo. Oshudi solo. Yeah. Okada has been banned. Isn't yeah. there anything the house itself can do in respect of maybe talking to the Lagos, the executive on managing this crisis because as much as we want to keep the sanity people are also feed job. basically on this you must be able to balance job creation and uh, so existence uh, existence and also security is there anything you are doing in the house uh, well, to balance no, well, all this? well for now the, the house of assembly is, is, we are on break so until we resume but the truth is that there's no way Lagos State government can ban Alcada outright in every place in Lagos State. Even in my place, that that look at it affected my place. Yeah, it's all on LCDA. It's a place that you see it's not a too well developed area. So you there are places that you still need the assistance of Alcada. Apart from that, Alcada, you see the jobs the jobs are not there like before. So some of these people even you find graduates, graduates are even losing Alcada to make a living. So I think maybe when the house also when we region, we'll look at it and have to review what we are doing, whether it also suits us. Besides, again, we are going, we are now entering the time for election. So sometimes you don't, there are, there are decisions you may not say because you take it like that, a blanket uh, a ban. It will also affect people looking at our government, especially in Lagos State, whether we don't even, because even if you want to say you want to ban them, you must, for me, you must create an alternative which is important because people have to earn a living. The hungry man is an angry man. And most of them are using that as a means of earning. Oh, yes, there are some elements of crime in some of them. But we will not say to the, 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 the baby with the bad water. So we should look at it very well and see how we can review this thing for the interest of not just the negotiations, the citizens, and also our party. 
election is really close. Thank you very much. Well. Thank you very much, support. Honorable Jude. Emeka, Omobo Wale, yes, that's okay, it. That name is yeah, Omobo Wale. Wale. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Omobo Wale. Oh, oh, abundant. Oh, oh, abundant. Oh, oh, <laughs> Have a great I'm Friday. Grateful. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. yes. Bye bye. Honorable Jude Emeka Idumogo, who is uh, representing the great people of Isolo Shodi Constituency, too, joins us on the voice, Voices from the Top show on Mina 19.3 FM. And just before that time, also. Uh, we Paulinus. did talk to Paulinus, Evangelist Paulinus uh, Gochiko, the President General of the Great People of, of Alabama International Market. We'll go on a short break. When we come back from that break, definitely INEC. we'll join INEC. The man from INEC joins us, the national man, the man that should know, the man that is the, the Commissioner the for Information, information and Voter national Education. Commissioner for Information. Commission and co- uh, voter Registration and Voter Education of the Independent National electoral commission will join us needs to thrive it is only important to seek clarity Not annoyed God by saying I'm, I'm honest, but with all modesty, I'm an honest Nigerian, and I have very few honest Nigerians. Talking to the stakeholders and getting eyewitness report and reviews is a priority. Africa is split already. Africa was split in 1885 in Berlin. So Nigeria is a colonial name. Kenya is a colonial name. Uganda is a colonial name. South Africa, these are all colonial structures. And this is what Kwame Nkrumah was trying to make Africans understand, that we need to think as one people and understand that these structures are colonial structures. And when we keep dividing Africa more and more, we are complicating the problem. We're not we're not solving the problem. That is why every Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. on this station, we unravel the mystery and intricacies behind the news. In fact, the argument is lost. We cannot do what we want to do unless we're able to minimize corruption or eradicate it completely, which is what we're trying to do. Listen to voices from the top every Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. And let's keep the conversation rolling. Just log on to Mainland 98.3 FM. We are the sound of Lagos Voices from the Top. is a show that you're listening to. My name is Jaydan. There's Joseph Alone Shaw in the studios with me. And we are traveling straight uh, to join the National Electoral Commission for ele- the electoral la- national, the INEC National Electoral Commissioner for Information and Voter Education, Mr. Festus Okoye joins us on the show tonight. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Yes. Doctor, okay. I was corrected. Just said I should call you Dr. Doctor Festus Okoye. Doctor and barista. Doctor and barista. <laughs> because they are very expensive. Doctor <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doctor Do- Okoye joins us on the show tonight. Is the National Commissioner for Information and Voter Education, INEC. Good evening, sir. How are you gearing up for the 2023 election? How is I, so how busy. is body <laughs> the INEC body ready? Is the INEC body ready for the election? Well, uh, we are getting ready and we are preparing in accordance with our timetable and schedule of activities, and also in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution and the Electoral Act 2022. Uh, so um, we've just, uh, as we are aware, we've completed the um, registration process. That is the CVR. Uh, we are doing the of the voters register of the voters register. Uh, thereafter, we are going to subject the voters register to test and object uh, objections, and then we will also distribute um, the voters cards of those who have registered. Uh, so we are also engaged in procurement and also looking at re- reusable materials. Okay. Oh, we we'll have to connect with Doctor. We, we, we would have to connect back to him, uh, but we have to talk the numbers. In 2015, we had a total of 69 million 288,177 people vo- registered on the voters uh, on the voters register across the country. In 2019, it moved forward to 84,000 people, 484 people, uh, million people, all registered on the voters on our national register for 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 INEC. And in 2023, the number has added again it is 96 million people over 96 million people registered at this point and uh, for the election in 2023 just so the numbers continue to increase mm. by year but voter apathy still remains a crisis in nigeria because we don't have people who want to vote uh, uh, doctor back back to you sir 
So I was running through the numbers. In 2015, we had over 69 million people. In 2019, we had over 84 million people registered. In 2023, with the new registration, the continuous uh, voters registration, the CVR, we have an improved 96 million people, above 96 million people registered uh, to participate in 2023 election. What would you say, uh, how would you rate this uh, turnout for continuous registration into our voters register? I, I didn't get to your last point. You okay, said, as, how, would I how, how do you rate the continuous registration? How the do you, improve, as the improvement the or the, the improvement in, in the voters registration that we've had? Well, I, I think that we have done well, uh, given the circumstances of the issue. Uh, we responded to the uh, increasing youth population in Nigeria by creating an online pre-registration portal. And so many Nigerians use that particular portal uh, to do their pre-registration before going to our state and local government offices uh, to go and capture their biometrics. So I think that there has been a marked improvement in the way we uh, register people. And then we'll go continue in that project. Oh, okay, okay, doctor, what, you know, even though if we say that we should still continue on this continual registration team, maybe two days to the election, so people will still complain. Recently, people say that you want to different disenfranchise the about to go to court. 7 million uh, Nigerians. People, Nigerians not to register to be part of those who we exercise their franchise and next year. What is What are you doing to address this issue? Yeah, doctor, can you hear us? Hello, doctor. Oh, hello? Wow. Okay, I think it's difficult to connect with him, but we will try as much as possible to get back to him. Doctor? Okay. But we still have uh, the National Commissioner for the Voters, Continuous Voters, for Information and uh, Voter uh, Education. Voter Education in our network. Why is, that, why is the network not behaving for it? Should we vote the, the network out? <laughs> but we still talk to him about clearing the voters' register. Mm. We know that there are a lot of people who are still registered in the voters' card, uh, voters' register, who are not alive. Uh, doctor, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Okay, great. So, Joseph so, was asking. So, I was asking about the purported uh, nine, uh, seven million people that INEC activity may disenfranchise. For if if they did not uh, include them on the registration, what what are you doing about this? How true is those figures? Nobody nobody has been disenfranchised. Nobody has been denied the opportunity of uh, of registering. Uh, what we created was what we call an online portal for pre-registration. Hmm. It is not registration. Uh, so you can get onto the portal, log in, uh, fill uh, uh, all your data. But if you do not go to the state or local government offices of the commission or to our rotational centers and complete your biometric, the implication is that your pre-registration has lapsed. Moreover, there were so many Nigerians who are in diaspora uh, who logged into the pre-registration portal? They didn't. They didn't complete their biometrics. Uh, some of them live in the U.S. Some of them live in London. Some of them live in Portugal. Uh, some of them are in China. Some of them are in Benin Republic. Since they didn't come back to complete their biometrics, their uh, pre-registration has lapsed. We okay. also had some Nigerians who started the uh, pre-registration and abandoned it and physical registration. So we do not have seven million persons who have been disenfranchised and who have been denied. A re registration. The moment you log on to the portal and you complete the pre-registration, we give you a clip with which you go to our local government office or state office to complete your, your biometric. So nobody has been disenfranchised and we don't have seven million persons who have been disenfranchised. Okay, okay. So again, I like you said that there's a lot of PVC that are that are yet to be collected. collected. What do you think we can do between before the next election? to see that people that those PVC that are ready people should if the people are still alive and they are in the country they should come and collect them well uh, you have stated what should be done this commission will not distribute any PVCs by proxy this commission will not give any PVC to any community leader or any religious leader or any any group whatsoever for purposes of distribution we do not distribute PVCs people who register collect these PVCs uh, personally so no PVC will be distributed by proxy. What we are pleading is that any individual that had the courage, individual that made out the time to, to register, to also make out time uh, to uh, uh, collect his or her PVC. That is the only way these PVCs can leave our state and local government offices. 
we are not going to distribute any PPE. PPEs that are collected are not distributed. So uh, uh, now, uh, Doctor Doctor Okoye, you, you know, sometimes our indiscipline, including me, is actually frustrating some agency of Nigeria, uh, especially the parties or individual in the party. Uh, you look at and they have his own process in complying in, in order to obey the, the electoral law. The question is this: We have people are saying, what is the status of? The current uh, Senate, the president. Senate president, the former minister for Ninja Data, Akwabio, and uh, and Lawa, and other people that they want to be president, and later they, they just want to chop, eat their cake, and, and have, will have everything. So, what is their status in terms of uh, the coming election? No, I, I, I think that people are getting uh, a, a few things more though. Okay, please help us out. Section 29, subsection 1 of the Electoral Act makes it mandatory that it is the political parties that conduct their party primaries that must submit the names of the candidates or the list of candidates they propose to sponsor uh, together with their affidavit and that these candidates must have emerged from valid party primaries so any political party needs to the independent national electoral commission the name or the list of candidates that did not emerge from validly conducted party primaries the commission is not under a constitutional or legal obligation to so publish such people. And that's exactly what has happened in the two instances I mentioned. Unless the courts interpret otherwise, and unless the courts determine otherwise, the two political parties uh, or the political parties will not have candidates in this spaces. Wow. So, so what we are saying are this those names is not for now except maybe are not on the list. they are not on the list they are not candidates as far as our neck record is concerned they are not candidates okay quick one in, in some in some region of the country over time there has been issues in respect to underage voting at a certain election i think 2015 precisely pictures emerged in 2019 pictures emerged in 2023 there's no doubt that we still have issues of underage voting in some region, in a certain region of the country, how does INEC intend uh, to clear the country of this this impending crisis? Well, uh, you know, you know, when I'm discussing about uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission and our processes and procedures, I don't talk about regions because the Constitution does not recognize any region. The Constitution recognizes local governments, 704 local governments in Nigeria, and it also recognizes uh, the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Uh, the issue of electoral malfeasance cuts across all the states of the federation, cuts across all the local government areas, cuts across ethnic groups, cuts across uh, religious groups. And so uh, the type of electoral malfeasance in one uh, state or one local government may be different from the type of electoral malfeasance in another in another local government. And so it depends on the uh, uh, on 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 the issues and depends on the uh, type of electoral malfeasance that you find. In each, in each state of the federation, uh, so so I think um, the issue of electoral fraud goes across regions. Uh, I mean, goes across states, goes across religion, goes across the ethnicity, and so on. Okay, uh, 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 Doctor Okoye, let let go back to Osu State. The way election, the last election, the governorship election in Osu State was conducted by INEC. You look at the time; the whole process was very close to perfection though there's no perfection in in life everybody actually give strive, kudos strive to i neck you guys that you do very very great so are we seeing that as part of a pilot to the coming election in 2023 is we are not doing pilots what we do is that for every off season or off cycle election we conduct we learn valuable lessons which we take to the next set of elections uh, some of the all the all the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, processes and procedures we deployed uh, in in during the Oshun governorship election, we are the same that we are deployed uh, during the AKT. governorship election. Was well, the same we deployed during the Ondo governorship election, uh, during the um, Ondo governorship election, and some of the other by elections that we have uh, uh, conducted. And so our promise to Nigerians is that we will keep on improving with every election, and 2023 will not be any exception. Okay. Finally, uh, okay, Joseph has a question and I also yes. have a question. Yeah, uh, uh, the, in, now, the issue of what, what is your take on how do you think Nigeria can key and support and like issue of us having a uh, multiple voters, no, not even multiple that 
we should have a electoral a, a court that will be trying people that uh, violate uh, our electoral <laughs> rules and regulations in order to fast track and equally pre uh, make people to know that if you go and a small line network, let me use that local language, then you face the consequence of that. Well, uh, in the next few days, uh, the uh, House Committee on Electoral Matters uh, will be organizing a public hearing on a, a, on an electoral offenses and uh, commission and tribunal deal. Uh, so I think that it is incumbent on Nigerians uh, to support setting up of an electoral offenses commission and tribunal uh, to do deal with the issue of arrest, issue of investigation, and also issue of the uh, prosecution of electoral offenders. By so doing, there's a possibility that we can break the cycle of impunity in terms of electoral matters in this country. And before I let you go, you are the National Commissioner and Chairman of Information and Voter Education. Uh, what do you think INEC is ready for 2023? Can you dispute or can you refuse the, how do I use the word now, these little gossips, the rumors that INEC is not really ready for the election? And many people are still arguing that INEC is, it would be biased when the election time comes. Do you think INEC is really ready for general elections in 2023? Give us your assurances and that of the INEC chairman. We are following our timetable and schedule of activity released by the Independent National Electoral Commission on the 26th day of February, uh, 2022. We have not missed out on any of the timelines. As far as this commission is concerned, our business is to organize, undertake, and supervise elections. And we are going to organize, we are going to undertake, and we are going to supervise uh, the 2023 general election. The conduct of election is a multi-stakeholder venture. The task of providing Electoral uh, uh, security for election resides with a completely different agency. The task of organizing party primaries and nominating candidates resides with the political party. As far as the commission is concerned, we are going to be ready and fully ready with all with our own ready constitutionally and legally, and we will not be found wanting. Definitely, we hope you will not be found wanting. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor Festus Okoye, for joining us on Mainland ninety eight point three FM. And we equally Thank appreciate all the wonderful work of INE. Just keep it up. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. That is National Commissioner for Information, Information and Voter yeah. Education, INEC, Dr. Festus Okoye, and has assured us that INEC will continue to follow the procedures that will lead to the 2023 general elections. Campaigns will start soon. Mm. But in many ways, campaign don't start. Mm, don't start. Now, nah, just the noise never begins. It did start. It, it, uh, JD, I want to just advise some of the, the gladiators. If you want to have a spokesperson, a person to talk for you, Nigeria have gone to the issue of uh, maybe attack dog. Sell issue, ideas. Not for you to be just, I'm listening to some, this is supposed to be brilliant and smart people. You see someone insulting the other person and this is not, you, we listen, we see campaign in US, we see campaign in civilized country. These are not, not this. I call you name, you call me name, and let us discuss the issue. Let's sell the the manifesto, the ideology of your your prin your, um, your principal. Your principal. Oh. We can take calls zero nine one three six zero 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 four one zero zero nine one three six zero 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 four one zero zero nine one three six zero 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 four one zero. So if you have issues with your registration, or the man is listening, just we can always uh, maybe you registered, you went there to collect your PVC. It is not there. You went online. They did, they locked you out. You have registered before, and you can't see your registration. You can't see. You still have the temporary voters card from the last election. See, for many years, mm. I had that. You know, see that TVC before it moved to the permanent voters card. Some people still have that old old one. I was in the bus one day, and they were talking about. Oh, the guy said, "Oh, you have to go and re register." I said, "I've registered now." That one said, "No, yeah, that one is not valid." That was for 2020, 2019 election. The 2023 <laughs> election <laughs> needs different... You know, all of this... Uh, uh, it's a lot of it's misinformation. Continuous. Misinformation is yeah. what runs the society. Yeah. One of the major presidential candidates also made that mistake mm. at the time. And they correct really. themselves immediately. But but you know, sometimes what the people... The thing is, now the first person to hear case, now they win. <laughs> that, but that's how it is. It's a, we live in an era of misinformation where the thing that goes to the air first is what people consider as the norm. When you are trying to refute all of these rumors and the rest of them, it becomes almost impossible to get the attention that I got the first time. Now, why fake news? They try with that. Yeah. Then I think I think another thing there we should we should see how Nigeria can be in peace. 
you are assigned by you making sure that you don't see something that will cause crisis in this nation. Because many of our friends that are brother that are outside, not that it's okay by them. I have a friend that is in USA, the tax is killing everybody. But here you can, who tax? Sometimes say people don't, there are some people that from the day they give birth to them to the last day, they don't pay tax. <laughs> For this, for this country <laughs> but, but but just uh, before we go we have fast running out of time i i need to pick your brain on this we had the national commission of for uh information and voter education at uh, first they talked to us fully and they talked about i asked a specific question about underage voting so he said that INEC doesn't recognize the regions region, yeah. that they only recognize local governments and the rest of them but should we say that is not in is not it's not uh, a practice that is even still very much rampant at this time. And it, it, to me, you know, when an officials of government, sometimes when it comes to issue of policy, you have to be careful in giving an answer. That 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 actually lie on the the government. You understand? There's something that the government know that we don't know. Go, INEC is under the government, and there are so there are little things that INEC can look at the issue of uh, vote buying. You know, people have been talking. What, what do you mean by vote? We haven't defined what we mean by vote buying. For example, if I I want to vote for APC, and maybe along the line someone, I, my mind is I want to vote for APC, and someone now say, okay, take this one as transport. You can't say it's vote because it's already is in my mind. You understand? That is the reason. If you if they go to court, I'm sorry to ask any lawyer. It is difficult for to convict say, anybody. For you to convict anybody, how do you know it's in my mind? I said, okay, that is what I w the party I want to vote for before. You know, I said, why do you call them? I said, they give me transport. Mm -hmm. they just, so, issue of, we just have to find a way for us to do the right. There's something you cannot, I used to tell people, if you go to court, that way you now know that something you are banned other in the media. When you go to court, the court, the judge will throw it away because you have to so convince the judge why this should be regarded as a crime. Just said we have to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> but we we'll still have uh, the INEC National Commission of and Chairman of Information and Voter Education. Com uh, that's first to call join us some other time on the show. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a meeting. No, we'll be, we just have to. Be, it will continually continue be on our show. Yeah. yeah. It, it says that there will be a, Mo a, 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 a clean public up, clean up. Yeah, yeah. There, there will be a, there will even be a, uh, a, a public, public hearing a public on electoral hearing offenses. On electoral uh, offenses by the this new week coming mm -hmm. uh, with the House of uh, with the members of the the, uh, the House of Representatives. So. I, I think I, I think I wish the youth in Nigeria should key into that. Too. It's not only the maybe See, it'll be the, the numbers the, say the that the no, new numbers Let's say that the youths make up seventy one percent of the new voters registered. So, if the youths are involved in registering, mm. maybe they it's about time involved in, involved in the too. processes. Yes, they should involve in the processes. Make sure that okay, the the court now. Let me show that that court is the giving support by the law that if anybody commit any offence. Relating to electoral, uh, whatever, yeah, whatever. Practice. let him face the consequence. Then let us because there are something that we need to define. We need to define. Are, are you, are you, people need to be going to court so that you don't abuse the judges of being biased. Hmm. Je, no judge is a father Christmas. We do something on investigation. So the issue there, if you did not convince the judge, you don't look at the look at the law on your investigation. The judge will throw it. Away. Even murder case. If you can't convince the judge, just say, well, from what I see, this guy have to... Yes, someone have died. But you cannot convince the judge that this person is the one responsible for it. So let our security personnel do more study. Go, we should be... This, look at what they are... Look at our friend, uh, Kurema, um, uh, the former, is He's there until October. Because the... If you're in good on, in good Oga, on the Metropolitan Police, the only person they cannot arrest is, is the, the queen. queen. Even the queen daughter or son or the queen husband if he do they would ask him to sit down <laughs> just that we have to go we, but one day our institutions will be that strong but for now we have personalities running institutions we'll pray, we'll pray for that day. the tale of nigeria at this time it is at this juncture we call it the date of today's edition <laughs> of voters of i said voters <laughs> of no, voices yes, from no, the no, top we, we focus yeah we just on the, voters know, education yes. today uh, voices from the top is brought to you on the station on fridays from seven to eight o'clock just as the name implies we bring people who are at the top today we had the National Commission and Chairman, Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, Dr. Festus Okoye, joined us all the way from Abuja. He should have been in the studio, but had to catch a quick yeah. flight. Uh, we also had Honorable Jude Emeka Idumogu, uh, who represents Oshodiso Solok, Oshodi 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 22. We also had uh, Envergenes Polinos Ugochuku, President General of the Alaba International Market.
Voices of Hotel, Voices on the Top take a, takes a break now. If you miss, if you miss any of the, any they're online. Yes, you can stream mm. Mainland FM. Just go to your YouTube dial, look for Mainland FM. You watch us live. Mainland FM Lagos, Mainland FM ninety eight point three. You watch us live on Facebook. Also, we are very much active on Twitter and all social media platforms. We are active. Have a fantastic rest of the night. Stay out of Friday. trouble. Stay out of trouble. Friday Friday begins in a moment. Yeah, I know what this is. 98.3 Milan FM. <laughs>